From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Flames send Billings residents on a hunt for a four-legged family member. He said the dog that left with him ran down the road. Plus, flooding problems persist, but help is here. Do you sell your cows? Do it start over again? And good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Tuesday, October 4th. We are so glad that you're watching with us. Okay, this morning we have a peek inside the Montana State Crime Lab where cases of fentanyl are being analyzed in criminal cases currently under investigation in our state. I did visit the crime lab to learn about some alarming numbers about the uptick in cases coming in and the unpredictable things that drug makers are doing to mix it. Chemists who work in the Montana State Crime Lab in Billings. It seems to be in a lot of different places that we didn't used to see it. Finding themselves now seeing more cases of fentanyl coming in. Fentanyl is making up uh, more and more of the evidence that we see. We're finding it uh, more often in large submissions of tablets, small submissions of tablets. So far this year, 20% of cases received into the lab contained fentanyl. It's distressing. And officials believe they'll analyze close to 600 cases by the end of the year, compared to just 200 last year. But perhaps the most alarming discovery is the stuff drug makers are mixing fentanyl with. Medicines that are used by veterinarians, uh, some of what we see are uh, other street drugs. Uh, fentanyl, acetaminophen, maybe some tramadol, which is a prescription medication as well for pain. The mission for them now? is finding ways to unbundle how cartels made the pill. If there's fentanyl there, I run tests to see if it's there, and if it isn't there, I run tests to rule it out. As a way to help investigators out and keep Montanans safe. It's, it's shocking because you think, why would you want to put that in your body, you know? Well, those at the crime lab also say they have seen cases of car fentanyl. It's used as a tranquilizer for animals as large as elephants. Back in 2017, they had two cases come across the lab. Those cases even more deadly because car fentanyl is uh, 10,000 times more potent than morphine. Okay, we are going to get a quick check of the weather with yep. our Miller Robson. Hey, good morning. You know, really easy forecast coming forward. Good. I mean, just a beautiful weather on the way. Nice. Um, maybe a little bit of rain Thursday morning off to our east. A lot of sunshine. Mm -hmm. uh, the big story this morning is the fog. We're going to see some fog this morning, some thick fog in spots. So please be careful as you're heading out to work and school. Uh, backtrack yesterday, our high of 64, pretty much on target where we should be for this time of the season. Overnight low, a little bit warmer than average. Got up to or got down to about 50, uh, but we got some cooler temperatures in the overnight lows coming up as we move forward. Top gust yesterday, a little breezy, uh, near 15 miles an hour. A little bit of rain yesterday, not a whole lot, but we are starting the month off. On a wet note, for the year we're still pacing ahead. Uh, still very dry out there in terms of the drought conditions here in Yellowstone County. So we could use some more rainfall. Unfortunately, nothing really for our area as we move forward for the rest of the week. You can see that fog uh, kind of moving through mm. out there. Kind of spooky this morning. Perfect for Halloween, I guess you can say. It's sure 46 is. right now at the airport. Feels like 41. Winds out of southwest at 10 miles an hour. Temperatures mainly in the 40s and some 50s this morning. Highs today in the 60s and 70s. Warmest day will be tomorrow, and then we get cooler. We'll have a complete look at your forecast coming up here in just a bit. Look at that. Who? Now, we had this shot up yesterday. This is of Seattle. This is the exact same shot of where the Space Needle would be sitting. And you can't see it. You can't see it because they're so fogged in this morning, too. Yep, so they sure are. Can't even see the Space Needle there. Um, I hate the fog is really, really hard to drive in. It's, it's not, really yeah. hard to do anything yeah, in. Yeah, and uh, visibility is very low out there in spots. So, yeah, it's not the best conditions this morning. Sorry about that, folks. But uh, Aww, if you no. want to leave uh, to go to work a few minutes early, it might be a good idea. So you That's can take good. your time. All right. OK, well, Miller, thanks so much. We'll okay. see you in just a little bit. Thanks. All right. This morning, Ukrainian forces continue advancing on the battlefield in areas Russia is trying to annex. Ukraine's recent victories, coupled with growing discontent at home, are significant blows to Vladimir Putin. The director of the CIA says Putin is being backed into a corner, which can be dangerous and reckless. The Russian military already stepped up attacks on civilian targets, but Ukraine's president promises to return back to normal as soon as possible. This morning, Carbon County farmers and ranchers have another place to turn for relief from this summer's flooding. Remember all of that that happened this summer? 
Well, some of their friends and neighbors are now working as disaster relief navigators through the Red Lodge Area Community Foundation. Their job is about connecting producers with money available to them, whether it's FEMA, small business loans, or through charities. They say help is out there. As of yesterday, we had about 50 folks, 50 households, enrolled in our disaster recovery program. We know that there's over 300 people in Carbon County who registered with FEMA, so we know we're missing people. So anyone who needs help can go to the website that you see at the bottom of your screen to apply. You can also donate um, on that website uh, to the Red Lodge Community Foundation online. All right, this morning the death toll from Hurricane Ian is rising with now 103 confirmed deaths. Happening today, officials are working to provide food, water and other aid for those still struggling days after that powerful storm. CBS's Christian Benavides brings us the very latest. Across parts of Florida, people sifted through the personal belongings that made it through the destruction Ian left behind. We really don't want to leave because this is all we have left. Cars lined up for bottled water as the hurricane's far-reaching impact stretches into a second week. We finally got water last night. But it's, it's, but it's yucky water. In Tampa, hundreds of volunteers from a disaster response team cook and serve meals for those in need. We've seen the devastation and the only way this happens where people can make a difference is when we all work together. As the death toll rises, providing aid is a door-to-door -door effort. Fire rescue! We have four ambulances here and we have two rescues here. Here in hard-hit Lee County, the sheriff defended the response amid mounting criticism over the decision not to issue an evacuation order until Tuesday, a day before Hurricane Ian made landfall. We got that message out at the right time. Now, whether people listen to it, we can't force people out of their homes, but we can continuously say, look, mandatory evacuation. Rebuilding after Ian, one of the worst storms to ever hit the U.S. is expected to cost billions of dollars. Tomorrow, President Biden and the First Lady will visit Florida to see the devastation firsthand. Cristian Benavides, CBS News, Fort Myers Beach, Florida. And also this morning, half a million Florida homes and businesses remain without power. So far, more than 1,600 people have been rescued statewide. Happening overnight, North Korea fired a ballistic missile over Japan, believed to have landed in the Pacific Ocean. It comes as nuclear diplomacy continues to stall residents in Japan. Evacuated buildings and trains were temporarily suspended. Happening this morning, the CDC and other health experts will release new details surrounding the flu. Doctors are warning to expect a nasty flu season, urging Americans to get vaccinated. This year, those over 65 are advised to get a special shot with extra protection to boost their immune response. We do have some devastating video to show you this morning. Take a look at this. It's a house that's on fire in our area. This home burned to the ground. And of course, this family not only lost their house and the memories inside, they also are searching for a missing pet this morning. As Q2's Haley Monica learns, the golden retriever escaped the flames, hasn't been seen since. It's a tragic loss no one can ever imagine going through, but one family is now left picking up the pieces after their home burned down Saturday, and they're still searching for a loved family member. By the time we had already left the house, we could see flames just shooting out of the, the basement windows. It's a fire that lit up the night sky, visible from miles away. But for the Ballou family, it all began with a small plume of smoke that set off the smoke detectors early Saturday morning. I had turned on the lights and saw the smoke and realized that it was real. My husband came running up out of the basement and asked for a, a fire extinguisher because the couch was on fire. Minutes later, the family's home of 16 years looked like this. The home was beyond saving by the time fire crews arrived. Fortunately, the Baloos and their two teenage sons got out safely, but they quickly realized not everyone in the family was accounted for. A little bit later on, we realized only one dog was present. And so that's when we panicked that he was still in the house. But that panic turned into hope later when the Baloos were discussing the fire. Their 13-year-old son had been the first to leave the home, and he confirmed he had brought a dog with him. And he said the dog that left with him ran down the road. 
So now the search is on for the family's five-year-old golden retriever. They're hopeful someone may have found him, but are asking that no one call for the dog or chase after him for fear that he will run away again, if spotted, to only call their phone numbers. The loss is huge, um, but Pete was a really special dog, and uh, it's heartbreaking. Um, we, we're just really hoping to give him back, so we have a little bit of hope now. A family that lost everything in the flames, but hanging on to the hope they will get their dog back. The one piece of the family still unaccounted for. The hardest part for the family through the weekend is to think about um, that he's no longer with us and we're a family of five instead of six. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. All right, thanks, Haley. Okay, this morning we do have some information about some brand new job opportunities for anyone who loves working in the great outdoors. The U.S. Forest Service just opened applications for seasonal workers next summer. You have to act fast, though. The current application window is only open until October 6. The agency is looking for varying levels of experience, everything from botany to archaeology and creatives on the recreation side. You know, the motto of the agency is serving the people, caring for the land. Um, it, it, it feels good to get up every day and do something that's, you know, has impacts both for your local community and the long term health of the forest. You can apply for one of the jobs by visiting the website that you see right there on your screen.